Hi, Mark Heath here, and in this video, we're going to look at some of the more link extension methods that uh, fall into the category of scanning methods. And scan is a really handy um, method. One of the um, most obvious uses for it is calculating running totals. So let's say I've got a simple sequence of integers, one, two, three, four, and I want to calculate the running total. Well, I can call scan passing the initial value of the running total, which is zero, and then a method that works out what the next value is. And so the next value will be the running total, the accumulator, which will be zero initially, and the next value in the system. So a next value in the sequence. So we're going to start off calling zero and one and get a value of one. Then we're going to call one and two and get a value of three. And then it'll be three and three giving us six and then four and six giving us 10. So if we just run this on its own, we can see that we get a five item sequence, zero, one, three, six, 10. And uh, maybe you've seen on my blog that I occasionally during December post about the advent of code challenge, which gives you a number of fun coding challenges. There was a challenge one day where basically you got these directions. So th this arrow means go right, this arrow means go up, this arrow means go left, and this um, means go down. And you want to sort of track where you are on a grid. So you start off at coordinates of x is zero, y is zero. And then depending on the current direction, you're going to, if it's go right, we're going to add one to x and keep y the same. If it's go up, we're going to keep x the same and add one to y. And I'm just using um, tuples here to simplify the code. But basically we're keeping a running total of where we are on the grid as we work through these directions. And then after I've done that, I'm just converting the tuple into a more readable string. And I'm actually putting them into a comma separated string with another more link method to delimited string. So let's just have a look at what we get here. And we can see that we started at zero, zero. We went right, so we're at one, zero. We went right again, so we're at two, zero. Then we went up, so we're at two, one. We went up, so we're at two, two. Then we went left, so we're at one, two, and so on. So it's a really handy method. Um, there is also two kind of variations on this that are probably less commonly useful, but um, they're there if you need them. First of all is scan right. So let's let's do scan right um, just like we did scan on the sequence one, two, three, four. Let's see what happens when we do scan right on one, two, three, four. Okay, and we see 10, 9, 7, 4, 0. And you might think at first, oh, that's just the reverse of this one. But it's not exactly the reverse of this one. It's not um, because this one went 0, 1, 3, 6. 10. Um, so what's happening here? Well, basically, the first value in our output sequence is the sum of everything. The second value is the sum of everything from that one on. The third value is the sum of everything from that one on. The fourth value is the sum of everything from that one on. And then the final value is um, the original starting accumulator. And then finally, there's a method called pre-scan. And pre-scan will do exactly the same as scan did, but it doesn't return the final element. So 0, 1, 3, 6, but there's no 10 at the end. I'm not 100% sure um, what a great use case um, for this particular version of the method would be. But again, it's there if you need it.